In the previous lesson, right before we finished, and in one of the other lessons, I talked about the four being used a couple different ways. If you're hanging on the one chord, such as what we've been doing, where we're just hanging over an E7 vamp, bass line was on E, we were truly on the four of the chord. The A note was the fourth of the E. But then I said, if you're playing a blues situation, where you're hitting that four chord, you need to think about the chord. You need to think about what really is the root, because if the chord is no longer an E chord and it's an A chord, A becomes one and all the numbers change. So it's important. Well, you have some jam tracks that actually have a cool little vamp. Give this a listen. That jam track, I inserted it in this course because it specifically helps us deal with that four, and it also helps you hear how the notes change. What I want you to do is to go back and use the jam tracks. You have them labeled. One goes just E7 vamp, the other one's E7 to A7. Go back and play all the licks that you've been practicing over both of them, and tell me if you don't hear a difference. Try to A, B it, because I'll give you an example. If I'm playing over this track, and I play the following riff, let's say I go like one, five, four, and I let that note just sustain, you can hear how it is strong right when I first hit it, because I'm on the four chord. The chords are changing one, two, change. So you got two beats on each chord. Our little rhythmic figure is one, two, and. So we're pushing the next chord, right? So we go like one, two, and three, four. If I let this note sustain, while we're on the third and the fourth beats of measure one, it's the root of the prevailing chord because it's an A chord. But then if I continue to let it sustain, you'll hear it change value. It'll change meaning. It'll be the four of the E chord that we're going back to. And then if I continue to let it sustain, it again comes back in as the root. Give this a listen. Two, three, four. I'll narrate this. Strong, weak, strong. Now that means that any of the licks that you have that end on the four are going to sound this particular way when you play against these jam tracks that are both the E7 and the A7. Let's go back to our jam track that we've been using. Here it just parks on the E, right? So if I play that same lick, one, five, four, It's always weak because there's no A chord coming into play underneath it in the rhythm track. So make sure you clearly can, can hear that. It's real important. Well, in this particular course, or this lesson rather, we're dealing with one and four as our first two primary fixed notes. And then we're going to go through our variables real quick. I can go one, four, back to one. That'll sound interesting. Two, three, four. Throw in some grace notes on our destination. Using a lower neighbor. Or let's use a higher neighbor. It's a different kind of sound, isn't it? Now, if you decide to just play it in position right there, you've got to execute a clean finger roll. Or use two different fingers. You won't have that problem if you lay it on, on the second and third strings because that perfect fourth interval is in adjacent frets as opposed to being in the same fret. So that's going one, four, one. Let's go one, four, four. That's not going to sound real stable, is it? And it poses some unique problems. Now, there's a little trick that I'm doing here. When I play the one, and I legato, I'm not hopping. I could go, that's one finger. You could hop. And to cleanly execute that, your first finger is still dampening those strings. You got to be real careful, especially if you've got light strings, because what happens when you pick that finger up? You can use the side of your thumb to... Come in and deaden the fourth string as you play the third string. 
This particular guitar is one I just put together and it's all routed out. It's a new thing I'm getting into. And it's absolutely incredible as far as sustain through high gain. But it's very, very sensitive. So every little thing comes through. It's a, a, it's a kind of a love-hate thing. Not really. I love it. But... So you could hop. If you decide to use a finger roll, or let's say you're playing and you've thrown a finger roll in there and you want to hit that note again and you'll put a vibrato on it. There's a little trick. I don't know. You probably can't see it in the video. When I roll, I'm way back here. Uh, let's see. Let me get in the video. This is always tricky. See where I am? I'm, I'm right. I mean, here we go. When I rolled, the string was there. When I do my vibrato, I need it more toward the tip. So while I'm... It actually shifts. I slide it a little bit while I'm doing the vibrato. So that's a little tool. I've never talked about that in any of my videos, but... Okay, so that's one way you could approach that, or... But this particular riff isn't very strong over the one chord, is it? It needs to go somewhere. So make sure you hear what I'm talking about, that this four is weak. But you can use it. And you know, you just don't want to use strong notes all the time. So we're going one, four. One, four, one. One, four, four. Let's go one, four, five. Okay, see what that sounds like. Two, three, four. Mm. There I went down for the four and the five, did some variations, started to go rhythmically in some different places. And again, I'm keeping you in this box. I mean, we've gone on for what, 30, 40 minutes here doing nothing but ba, ba, ba. That's what I want you to do. Just stay in this. I don't care if it's a week. It'll force you to set aside rhythmic options and really focus on technique and note selection and this embellishment idea. Okay, so we're going one, four, five. Now you could do that. That's rather unusual because they all lay on one string. So layouts, I'm not going to spend the time here. That's for you to do because uh, there are many, many different layouts, and that's up to you get creative on that. That was one, four, five. What if I go one, four, flat seven? Now that's kind of a modern sound because that's actually implying an E7, sus4. Let's play along with the track. Two, three, four. Mm. It sounds like the kind of thing that Eric Johnson or a fusion player would play, a jazz rock player, using that four to create a sus four sound over the harmony, because the chords might indeed be... Seven sus four instead of seven. So remember something. I've been telling you that the four was weak, right? Well, I lied to you. It's a partial truth. The four is going to be a weak tone if you're playing over the E7 because then you've got this thing going on. And it's when we say it's weak, it depends. It's, weakness can have a cool modern sound. I mean, I love chords that have both the three and the four in them, but you have to listen to what's going on around you. In terms of traditional blues, Your four is going to be the weaker tone. But remember, you have to listen to what's going on. So everything we're doing here isn't just blues. It's fusion, it's rock, it's jazz. So there's a lot of mileage you can get out of this stuff. So that was going one, four, flat, seven. Let's go one, four, flat, three. Those were all examples of one, four, flat, three. You can play them with some attitude and get a little fire and have some fun with this stuff. Turn the gain up. So you see, I'm not going to go through every little possibility here. At this point, you're starting to see what you can do with this. But that was using the four as our second tone. And of course, 
Don't forget to... I'm viewing that. One, four are my ter- first two notes. Ba, ba. Beats one and two of our rhythmic figure. And then my kick is the variable. One, four. And I can take it wherever I want. You can even shred on the end of it. 